Serendipity takes many forms and sometimes cause and effect can be separated by decades. Random flavors and aromas can trigger memories of a favorite childhood snack, meal or treat. And Chef Dion Vingertas found the inspiration for today's menu in fond memories of his boyhood. At the foot of Table Mountain sits one of Cape Town's finest hotels and its lush garden serves as the ideal setting to prepare a very modern Indian menu. I'm very excited about the modern Indian menu, but how would you describe it? It's so difficult to describe modern Indian. I mean, trying to plate a good curry, it's impossible. It is what it is. It's a good cooked hearty curry. It's put into a bowl. There's a bit of rice with it, some sambal on the side, and that's it. So I just try to take those same traditional flavors and stick through to its heritage and give it a more of a modern approach in terms of plating it and putting it on a plate and how it's going to be consumed as well. I'm looking so forward to the starter. I'm going to leave you to it and I'll observe from the side. Perfect, cool. What we're going to start with is the vade sort of falafel mix. It's something that I've created. It's a mix between both of them. So what we did here is we've taken the lentils and chickpeas and we allowed it to sit overnight in water just to literally just soak up, but it's still raw. That's when you blend it up because you want that rawness. You want this sort of base of lentils and chickpeas to hold all of the ingredients we're adding into it. We have the spice blend over here that I've taken a bit of crushed uh, red dried red chilies, coriander seeds, some fennel, a bit of caraway seeds. And this is just going to add that crunch and bring the entire fritter alive. And yeah, so we've got a bit of mug beans, a bit of peas, broad beans, alfalfa, kidney beans. And it's very seasonal at the moment. At this point, you literally just want to sort of combine them all together and then shape it into a flat disc and then you deep fry it at 180 degrees for close to five minutes until it's uh, GBD, golden brown and delicious on each side. And this is the end result that you end up with. It's still tied together, but not too stiff as well. It's like this perfect vegetarian burger. Next, we have the morojo with puri. So we're just gonna heat the morojo up here. It's just this wild spinach that I've sort of stewed down with cardio cereal, that's black mustard seeds, cumin seeds, a bit of dried chili. And we've crushed this chickpea puree that we've put inside of it. Then in the spot here, we're just throwing in the curry leaves, the dried red chili and the cumin seeds and black mustard seeds. And you just want to get your puri. This is basically just Nkomazi sour milk that I've taken and flour, a bit of water and combine it together. When you deep fry it, you're left with this sort of consistency. It puffs up a lot and then you just separate it in the center. They puff open and then we want to stuff the morojo mixture inside of it and then cover it with its lid. The next one is the kale pokora. So it's basically just a flat leaf or curly kale, whichever you can find. So what I've done is just taken this pokora better and coated it inside of it and deep fried it. So for the flavoring of the chickpeas, we just want to bring it to a high heat, just temper it lightly to release all of its flavors. The curry leaves, the dried chili, it creates an amazing aroma around it with the kado syrup, the black masses, the seeds and cumin seeds. We've just taken chickpeas and literally soaked them overnight and cooked them in salted water. That's perfect. You don't want to take it further than this. As soon as you see it coloring, drop your chickpeas in that hot pan and just toss it up a little bit. You want to leave it in there for a little bit. That oil coats around the actual chickpeas. So what you do with this now for this complete dish is take this, cool it down lightly, put it into a little small bag and then just mash it up. You want to get this cracked chippy consistency so it sort of amplifies its flavor as well because Whatever soaked up on the outside is cracked now and it's all just distributed evenly. For the sort of fritter vibe, you just want to do this yogurt. It's a day, it's got fresh mint, fresh green chili and coriander that's been chopped up and mixed through. A little bit of sour milk added to it and a touch of lemon juice. So it's fresh with this bright green flavored herbs that just brighten up the rest of the dish. The consistency of the actual fritter with the combination of the wet sort of fragrant day, the yogurt, just works superb together. What we want to do is grab some of this, it's poporoms that we've taken and just cooked in the microwave because we want to add any oil to it because we want to blitz it smooth into this powder and just want to add a lot of this on top. For the kale, what we want to do is just heat up some of this chickpea puree. So very similar to the flavors that we have over here, but instead of tempering it, we boil everything together. You want to heat it up before you work with it because the flavors that release from it, it comes alive again. So once you have this paste consistency, just want to get it at the base of your plate and then get your kale. Those chickpeas that we've tempered and crushed on top of it. 
We want to bring some of the mustard leaves in. It ties in with the tempering of the mustard in the beginning with the cumin. You want to take some of the curry leaf dressing just to go on top of that fritter for your puri pata vibe with the Morocco inside of it. What you want to do to finish it off, I've just taken these nuts and seeds. It's got this phenomenal light smoky texture to it. And that's it for your street food, modern Indian snacks that I grew up eating. Dion, your selection of starters has already blown my mind. I cannot wait to see what you're planning next. So we just start off with the prawns. We just want to gently poach it in this uh, prawn oil. We've used a bit of black garlic in there, green chili, curry leaves. And what we've done is roasted the prawn heads with this oil and slowly rendered the flavor from the shells to infuse it into the oil. So it's cooking it in its own flavor. As soon as they curl up, they're done. It takes a few seconds. You don't want to overcook it at all. For the plating up, you want to start with the popodome powder that we've infused with the seaweed and the dehydrated prawn heads. Blitz that up together. You want to get as much as you can at the base and then neatly pick your ring up. There we go. The next thing is to get the yogurt right at the base as well in the center. The curry leaf dressing. Just a few blobs in between. Again, you want that sharp lime curry leaf flavor to sort of transcend through the entire dish. Next, we're gonna grab our coconut rice, which we've infused the coconut cream with curry leaves, green chili, coriander, coconut milk, reduced it down and then lightly cook the rice in until it's steamed perfectly. You want every single grain to have its individual identity as well. Then this Malay sweet and sour tomato-based curry sauce. Just a little bit to sort of overflow on top of the rice that you've cornelled. Not a lot, because you still want the prawn to sort of shine through at the end of the entire dish. You want to grab your prawn heads. These are phenomenal. I mean, <laughs> a lot of guests are very weary about it in the beginning, but we do convince them to taste it, and it's unbelievable once they sort of... Oh, my own. <laughs> it's got this crunchy texture to it, but a full prawn flavor, I mean, when you eat the prawn curry, it's got whole prawns in it, and the best part is um, the shells and the headpiece, my favorite. Okay, we should get our prawns that have been gently poached. Then our crispy pakora prawn pieces, there's three of them on the plate. Then we have this relish with the green mangoes, lemon acha, tomatoes, red onions. It's all been sort of chopped up together and macerated in this vinegar and the acha oil and then some salt. So it breaks down everything together. So it's this full flavored relish that just works perfectly with the curry. Then this is my favorite. It's just this light froth of lime juice, curry leaves, green chili that has a little bit of lecithin inside just to keep the aerated sort of froth. And just to finish it off, a bit of pulled coriander leaves. Dion, that looks spectacular. I'm literally eating with my eyes. When you eat it, I promise you, it's like it's like getting into a prawn curry. I think if it was a bit of pop with it, it would be a different story, but it's exactly what it is. I cannot wait to sample that. But Dion, first, dessert. For the dessert, we have these crazy, insane flavors. To start off with it, what we want to do is, you just want to pull your moist chocolate cake apart and break it down. Get your cylinder of the beautiful masala tea. There we go, spot on. We're gonna get our dark chocolate over the moist chocolate cake. For the ice cream, you just wanna put a bit of like shards in random pieces. Then lastly, the burfi almond powder praline vibe that we had going on, just literally thrown onto the plate. There you go. I have literally been salivating on the sidelines. This looks incredible. Dion, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Taking inspiration from his Indian roots, Dion has managed to combine his heritage with his love of fresh ingredients to present a modern take on traditional recipes.